<clears throat> okay, so uh, we're going to look at some JavaScript. Um, we're going to start with a blank document. So, as usual, let's create a folder for our project. I'm going to create a folder on the desktop. You can just put today's date on it. It's the last day of the month. Isn't there like a huge solar eclipse coming or something that I keep hearing about? So, in that folder then, um, let's open Notepad. And we'll save that file. We'll create the usual very quick HTML file. Call it index.html. That's our common name that we should use for our starting projects. So create a folder, create a file, index.html, save it in the folder, and we'll start the, that quick 10 lines or so of HTML. The doc type, the HTML pair, head, pair, body, meta tag of car set, title, let's say um, JavaScript battle, and um, Get ready to get started on line eight. So we've seen this before a few times, and uh, this is all that we need to get started. JavaScript doesn't need anything special to run. It's just going to be code that we type in an editor as usual, and then the web browser runs it. And uh, JavaScript is the interactive aspect of. Um, is the interactive aspect of web design. HTML is structure, CSS is design, JavaScript is interaction. So you can set up your content in the HTML, you set up how it looks in the JavaScript, and you set up for it to do something in the JavaScript. I have an example here. Pull up my example. Okay, this is going to be the superhero battle. We had the Marvel blog a while ago. With JavaScript, we're going to do the superhero battle. So it's going to be very simple. There's going to be a button. Fight. Click on that. Invisible Woman versus Kingpin. She's got power 35, he's got power 51. Invisible Woman loses. We click another battle. Invisible Woman, power 62 versus Dr. Doom, power 98. Uh, she, she's having a bad day today. She lost again. Um, let's do another one. Spider Man versus Kingpin. Spider Man, power 77, Kingpin, power 21. Last time Kingpin appeared, he had a different power. So this is going to be different power levels. And then winning or losing the hero. Um, Daredevil versus Kingpin. Classic matchup. Daredevil wins 88 to 29. So this is going to be all through JavaScript. We're going to have characters that are going to be picked at random. They're going to battle each other. They're going to have some amount of power to battle each other to determine who wins, and then a declaration of who wins. So that's all through JavaScript with a few uh, basic concepts of JavaScript. So what our document needs then to get started is a button. Let's create a button. We'll put something in the button. 
That's the text that appears on screen. Now, we're going to click a button to run some JavaScript. This is one of the basic concepts of JavaScript. JavaScript can run automatically, or it can run triggered by something. A button press. Well, in order for the JavaScript to know that it should run after being clicked, a common way to do it is having an ID on the button, a unique identifier. So ID attribute of the button, PTN battle. IDs, we've used them several times for CSS, but JavaScript also uses them. A unique identifier, when we click that button, then run some JavaScript. We can write JavaScript in a file, or we can run it in its, or we can create it in a separate file. For simplicity, we're going to do it in the same file. This would be like CSS. We can create a CSS, a style block, and write all our CSS in this file, or we can create a CSS file and, and write it all in its own file. JavaScript is the same. We're going to create a script block. We had the style block in the head of the document because basically we needed to run the CSS as soon as possible to style the document. <coughs> we often have the script, the JavaScript block at the end just because we need to uh, create all this HTML content and then we need to write JavaScript. Inside the JavaScript, everything that exists here will be JavaScript. We're going to start off first with opening and closing parentheses, another opening and closing parentheses, and a semicolon. We can write comments in the JavaScript block, but these comments are different from the HTML comments. We, we write slash asterisk space asterisk slash. Now everything in between that is a comment. It's uh, not the same as the HTML comments. So they won't work here. It's slash asterisk. You also need double slash? Mm -hmm. JavaScript multi-line comment. This comment takes many lines, as many lines as you want. Another way to do it, we have two kinds of comments, double slash, which is a single line comment. Only this line is a comment. I use them both all the time, double slash to make one, one, one sentence of a comment. And then the multi-line, remember to write the pair, the multi-line and multiple lines. Now I'm using the basic color scheme and a lot of you change to the different better colors, but you should see that comments of course become a certain color. In my basic colors it's green, so if anything else is still green, you can close your comment and the rest. Asterisk like it's like a mirror image. Slash asterisk, which is shift eight, asterisk slash. Well this code that I just wrote down there. So um, modern best way to write JavaScript. Immediately, immediately invoked function expression. And iffy. Trust me, it's the best. We don't have the, all the time to go into the full details of this, but this is the best way, the modern way, the way that you're going to see menial programmers writing JavaScript. We're going to write our JavaScript inside of this special function, this special command. So inside of those parentheses, inside of the first parentheses, we'll write function, and then another pair of parentheses, and then a pair of curly braces. This is the complete ify. I-I-F-E, immediately invoke function expression. 
we can write all our JavaScript in this function. It's short answer, this is just the best way nowadays to do it. You see this a lot on various tutorials and templates of JavaScript. So I want to write it completely because what we're going to do is break our curly brace. All of our 20 lines of JavaScript are going to go inside of that, those curly braces. So I wrote everything just so that we can see the whole chunk of code, and then we'll break those curly braces into a couple of lines. Open quote, end quote, semicolon. Inside the quotes, use strict. Activate strict mode. So browser processes it better. Most web languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, are very loose. They're very. Um, What's the opposite of strict? Unstrict. Uh, they're not strict, meaning they, uh, they, they can kind of understand what you're trying to do. If you kind of write the code properly, it kind of understands it. Um, that can cause issues because um, we kind of write the code properly, but it doesn't do what we want. So by activating this, this option, use strict. We're telling the browser process our code in the strictest way so that it works best. It also speeds up the code and other good things. Next line, a couple of enters there. I want to um, be able to use this button in the JavaScript block. Right now the script block doesn't know that that button exists so we need to write a JavaScript we need to create a JavaScript variable that references that button so that we can then use the button in the JavaScript VAR to create a variable call this EL BTN battle equals so make a note above that Create a JavaScript object or variable of an HTML node or tag. We will be able to reference the HTML button with this sort of shortcut or, or keyword. In the JavaScript, we're going to use this as a representation of that button a variable and we're saying that variable equals or means that button. So that button's got an ID. Document dot get element capital E by ID in the document, in the main HTML document. Get an element by its ID. Notice the special spelling. It has to be that way. Capital E, capital D, capital I. Beginner mistake is to type capital I, capital D, which I wish that's what it was, because everyone types it wrong the first times. Capital I, capital D. No, it's just capital I. Inside the parentheses, inside of quotes, we say the ID is BTN battle, spelled exactly the same, of course, as it is up on the HTML. If you had lowercase b and you had uppercase b, this would work, or vice versa. You wrote capital B up there and lowercase b. It says I don't know where I I don't know where BTN battle is, but I know where BTN battle is. So it's got to be spelled exactly the same. So that's what this does here. It creates a JavaScript variable of an HTML node. Now we can use that button that exists in the HTML. Now we can use it in JavaScript. Next line. I'm going to create a function 
called FN battle parentheses curly braces. That's uh, similar to what we wrote up here, sort of. Function per parentheses curly braces. This is technically an anonymous function. This is a name function. This function runs right away, immediately invoked. So all of this code is going to run right away. This code here won't run until we call the name of that function. We're going to click this button to run that function. And a function is a collection of steps of code. So, is it, when, you're, when the browser is reading it, is it, st is it still reading the HTML the JavaScript? Exactly. It's still reading it all in order from the top to the bottom. That's why we write the HTML first, so that is read and processed, and then it reads the JavaScript stuff in order from top to bottom. Create a function, <coughs> a collection of JavaScript commands steps or actions so this is a function it's going to run we haven't exactly linked them yet we have a button that we're going to press to run a function but it doesn't know yet click this button to run that function it doesn't know that yet I'm going to break those curly braces And we'll write a command alert. If you've noticed, I've been writing a semicolon at the end of almost every line. Use strict semicolon. Command and the statement. Var semicolon. Command and the statement. I didn't write a curly brace at the end of function, and it would be okay if you write it. It's very common to have that semicolon at the end of function. Uh, although this is when you get into arguments with people online of what's the best way, what's the right way. They're both right, they're both wrong. The more right way is the, is the way the instructor tells you. So, uh, no semicolon, only basically when we create a function. That one is it's not really necessary there. I guess we can write a comment, not necessary to end a function declaration. with a semicolon. You could and it'll still work, but I subscribe to the no semicolon at the end of function school of thought. Okay, this command, alert, makes a pop-up with a message. The message is inside of the parentheses inside of quotes we clicked. JavaScript is the hardest language of, uh, of web design. HTML is easy. CSS is less easy. JavaScript is hard. But it is, of course, doable. It, it makes sense when you have the experience and you learn and you have a good book and instructor and all of that. But just to let you know, the JavaScript is going to be the hard one. We're only going to do a very simple 20-line JavaScript thing, so it's not going to be that hard. But what I'm showing you here is, step-by-step, step, we're setting up a button to be able to use it in the JavaScript, which will run a function. These are not linked yet. And to make sure that it's kind of working, we're going to make a pop-up that says, yeah, we clicked that button, and it did make a pop-up that says, we clicked the button. It's often better to kind of make sure you've programmed the basic steps before going to the harder steps. The harder steps is going to be Spider-Man versus Kingpin. That's the harder step because it's got to do a lot of processing and thinking for that. Outside of the function, so make sure you go past the curly braces. Now we're going to link the two. We're going to link that when you press that button, you run that function, which will give us a pop-up that says, we clicked the button. We're going to refer to that button in the JavaScript. So what do you think we type? We have two possibilities. We're going to refer to the button on the screen in the JavaScript in two possible ways. Yes, exactly, the LBTN battle. 
we created a variable object in JavaScript which refers to an HTML tag. So we're not going to write the name of the tag or the ID in the JavaScript. We're going to write the element that we created, EL for element. An element representing the button battle. Dot add event listener. We're starting to see a pattern here as well, perhaps. Something dot something parentheses. Something dot something parentheses. Technically, that one of alert, I always forget which it is, but I think it's window dot alert. Don't type this, but I, I believe it's something. It's either window or document. Something dot something parentheses. Something dot something parentheses. This is the syntax that you see a lot in, in JavaScript as well. And here we can say an object with a method attached. An object, the button in the HTML dot method. And method is just a fancy way of saying a command. Alert is a command that will make a pop-up. The command get the element and the command add event listen methods attached to objects. So we're saying there's a button on the screen. We're waiting for an event. We're listening for an event. We're waiting for a click on the button. Once there's a click, do something. We're waiting for the event inside the parentheses of a click. We have other events, click, double click, right click, click and drag, and even some other ones like load, unload, a um, bunch of other ones, uh, tap with the finger, double tap, pinch. We have all of these events that could happen. One of them is click, comma. We're waiting to click on an object. We're waiting to click on a button, comma. Once we click, run a function. Function fn battle. We write it like this, fn battle. Attach a click event to the button after a click run the fn battle function now it does have parentheses above when we defined it when we wrote it but it doesn't have a parentheses here that is something to to get used to there's no parentheses in the event listener in this instance, but there is parentheses when we defined it at the top. I believe at this point this is enough for us to, to at least test it. Save the code and run it in your browser. Try clicking that button and see if you get a simple pop-up that says, we clicked. So I've got a button that says battle. I'm going to click battle pop-up we clicked let's pause here if it didn't work how many of you did it work good anyone need a little help didn't quite do what you expected possible errors could be spelling right I've got an ID up on the HTML spelled a certain way capital B I can't show it all in one screen anymore but um, oh, let me do it this way zoom in this way so up on the up on the uh, HTML block capital B for battle and then in the variable we've got capital B as well and the spelling right here might trip you up capital E capital B capital I and then make sure this bar is spelled the same as that Need, need 
some help on that. This works. This is a this is one of the biggest concepts of JavaScript, uh, creating uh, JavaScript objects that represent HTML nodes or HTML tags, and then we've got event handlers. We're waiting for something that triggers something. A button upon a click will run a function, and this function then is when all of the good stuff will happen. This is where it will um, do the battling and all of that. Now we made that pop-up happen, uh, but I want that I want the text instead to appear uh, on the on the screen in the HTML. Well, JavaScript is so powerful because it can write, it can read and write and manipulate HTML and CSS. It can invent CSS and write it. It can invent HTML and write it. It can read what's there and change it. So what I want to do is underneath the button in the HTML. I want text to appear there. I want results to appear in the HTML. So what we'll do first is create a couple of placeholder elements in HTML. Those placeholder elements will then be filled or changed with the JavaScript results. So let's back up to where we had the button in HTML. Right, Our HTML portion is really small. We, we only have a button, really. But after the button, we're going to create a div. A div is a division. It's a simple placeholder. In order for it to work, it needs an ID. I'll say div, ID div characters. Another div below that with an ID. 
the winner. We're creating an invisible placeholder to display the, the characters that are going to be battled. And then a placeholder to display who won. So in the JavaScript, we need to do something very similar of what we did with the button. We need to create JavaScript objects that reference HTML objects or elements. Pretty much the same thing. We'll create a variable, get its element by ID, so that we can reference these two new HTML elements in the JavaScript. We'll go back to our JavaScript, and after LBTN battle, create another variable called L div characters. Notice I'm making it pretty easy by prefixing them. These names are totally optional. You can call them anything. You can call this kitty cat and it'll work. But uh, I use L for element in the name of the ID up there so that when I'm looking at my hundreds of lines of code, it hopefully makes sense to me that here's a variable in JavaScript that is referencing an HTML tag. So I'm using the same sorts of names. Just be mindful of the capitalization. No capital D there, although it'll work if you've got a capital D there. But our, our convention has been that the capitals are on the second word. Same thing here. Now the div is the second word, so capital D. It would work if it's L, lowercase div, lowercase character uppercase. That's fine. Whatever way you want to do it, but just be consistent. And the funny thing is you can type it wrong consistently and it'll work as long as it's consistent. So we're creating a JavaScript element to represent an, an ID of HTML. Makes sense that I write the quotes and the ID up on top. Copy and paste that if you want. And then another one the same way. Another var, another variable, l div winner equal to all of that. You can copy and paste some of this to save yourself some effort. Copy and paste works great if your code is correct. If you wrote something wrong and you copied and pasted, you've got a lot of copies of wrong code. So make sure your code is correct before copying and pasting. We'll say here, create JavaScript. And now we have more than one. You can change your comment if you want. Create JavaScript. didn't write that, objects or variables of HTML nodes, plural. Change that if you want or not. It's just comments, remember. So these are optional, but if you write comments to help you, notes, that's good. All these are JavaScript objects. The variables represent the HTML nodes, tags up there. So we can reference all three of those HTML elements in the JavaScript now. So when I demoed the project a little earlier, it's going to have, you're going to click the button, two characters will be picked randomly, and then no battle. So we need to define a list of all of the characters that could battle each other. That again is going to be variables. Variables are very versatile. We've got variables that represent HTML. And we're going to create another variable that represents the characters. Next line, I'll separate these because, uh, you know, conceptually, I think separating them, these kind of relate to each other and their elements. What follows then are going to be the list of characters. List of characters that battle. Var. Array heroes equals. <clears throat> An array is the technical term for a list or collection of 
items. I want to list the heroes that are going to battle. It's an array. This is written in a special way, equals square brackets, semicolon. So we've never used square brackets before. Square brackets means an array. It's an array. It uses square brackets. Square brackets, square braces. They call a couple of things, just like curly brackets, curly braces. So inside of the square brackets, in quotes, let's list three characters. Spider-Man. Comma. Quotes. Invisible Woman. Comma. Squirrel Girl. So I wrote the name of the character with proper spelling and spaces and such in quotes. It's one character, comma, and a comma. First character, comma, second character, comma, third character, no final comma. Here, all three of those can be referenced or can be used in that array, in that variable that holds multiple items. Do the same thing for a few villains. Array villains. Square brackets. And here you can put some villains. Let's go back to the uh, function of battle. This alert message was only useful for a moment to confirm that when we click the button, something will happen. I don't need that alert to pop up anymore. What should I do? We can delete it or comment it out. Code that is commented out is deactivated. I could delete it, but maybe I need to use it again later. So instead of deleting it and forgetting what I wrote, I can commenting it. So adding a double slash there will comment out that line. I already had a comment at the end, so it's like a double comment, I guess. That was commented out. It was a little message for myself. And then now, I don't need that code to run anymore. It's, gonna, it's in my way now. So double slash to comment it out. If I still need it later, I can uncomment it and reuse it. Well, what I want to do here is um, I want to display the list of those heroes on screen uh, to see if I'm on the right track. We have the L div characters object which represents the div of characters. So ldiv characters is the object, the method, dot, e, dot inner HTML. There's a div on the screen, that's the object. We're going to run a command on it. The command add event listener, the command get element by ID, the command alert, the command, the method, inner HTML. Inside of that div, let's write some HTML. So here's JavaScript creating content in the HTML block. For the moment, in quotes, let's just say hello. Save it and run it. Click the button. 
instead of an alert, a pop up, it should then display the word hello, below the button. If it doesn't, check your spelling. L div characters inner dot html. Notice html is all in capital letters and the word inner is not. Let's see here, I'm going to click battle. I should display inner html. Document get element by ID. Sorry, the syntax. I'm thinking of something else slightly different. OK, um, delete the parentheses part. I'm thinking of jQuery, not plain JavaScript. This is a little bit different. We have these methods, these commands. Methods. This is actually not a, a method. It's a property. We've got an object and we've got a property. What is the HTML? of this object. So we'll say um, on the object change its HTML property. So that's going to be an equals. Then the quotes semicolon hello. Other properties that exist, width and height, background color, font. So there's lots of properties that define an object. One of the properties, inner HTML. And we're saying, let's set that equal to the word hello. Okay, there it is. When you refresh it, you should not see anything because the div is empty and invisible. But then when you click battle, the event of click happened. It runs the function battle. It sees the empty div. And inside of the property of inner HTML, it writes hello. So that should happen there. Instead of it saying hello, let's remove those print let's remove those quotes and hello and in say instead we'll say okay show me the list of heroes. So no quotes array heroes. message the word hello if we were to write array heroes in quotes something else happens don't write this but something else happens array heroes it writes exactly what was in the quotes not what is inside of the array not is not what is inside of the list that variable so sometimes we have quotes and sometimes no quotes and as you learn more JavaScript, you'll understand more the difference. Why? Basically, the quotes is a, is a string. It's called a string. And that is a literal, a literal string. Literally write, we clicked. Literally write, array heroes. No, I don't want literally array heroes. I want what's in the array. What's the collection in the array? What's the stuff in the array? Without quotes. And it says, OK, what you've got in the array is Spider-Man, comma, Invisible Woman, comma, Spogo. Well, I want to display the first, only the first item in the, in the array, not the whole array, just the first item. So we use square brackets. We've attached these square brackets to that object. This object equals, this object is full of square brackets, three things. 
Okay, now let's display it. This object square brackets the first thing. Number one, let's say. So I want to display the first item from this array. So that should be what? Actually invisible one. Starts at zero. If you've taken any programming languages, you might know most programming languages start to count at zero. So this is correct. It did exactly what I told it. I wrote the first character. Yeah, because we start counting from zero. Zero, one, two. So if we wanted the first character, we have to put zero. This is one thing to get used to in, in like 99% of the programming languages. The zero width item, the zero width index. Technically, this is the index. The zero width index is the first item. One, two, three, and such, those are natural numbers. They come naturally. We have one finger, two fingers, three fingers. But in computers, we start with zero because of the binary nature of computers, zero and one and all of that. So now I'm displaying the zero width item. If I wanted to display the third villain, can you figure that out? How do you make it display the third villain? Array villains, brackets, two. Zero, one, two, the third villain. Naming the array and then getting its index. Well, my idea is I want um, the demo that I showed earlier, one character versus another character. And every time I click the button, it was a different character versus a different character. So if I can say exactly which index from the array, it will always be 2. It will always be 3. It will always be 1. It will always be 28. So I have to have a way to create a random number, a random position, choose a random character either 1 or 2 or 3. Actually, either 0, 1, or 2. I have to create a random number. We can create random numbers with, with JavaScript. Let's back up, because this stuff does go in order. I want to create a random number first. I want to randomly choose one of these. Then I want to display it. So we'll back up. Um, back up there and uh, we'll we'll make a random number first of all so VAR variable call this random number hero equals create a random number The other ones are created right away. But things inside of a function don't exist really until they are triggered, until they are run, until the function is run, and the function is run by the uh, event listener down here. So we're going to say math capital M dot random. There's a little math that we have to touch sometimes. OK, so we've got the object. There's a built-in object of math. We have the object that we created of L div characters. We created the object of um, uh, L button. We've got the document. We've got one here. And 
let's just, just memorize its capital M for math. So we've got an object of math, and we've got the method, random. This is the command, basically, that creates a random number. Let's do console.log random number hero. We've got another object, the console object. We've got another method, the log method. Show a log message in the developer's console. I want to see what random number did it pick when I clicked the button. Save it and run it. <coughs> we're going to click the button and then we're going to see what random number did it think of. Are you seeing any issue? Well, where, where's that random number? I never said to display the random number on screen. Here I said display that villain on screen. I never said here to display this on screen. I said to display it in the console, the developer's console. Every web browser nowadays has a developer's console. When you press F12 in your web browser, I'm in Firefox, and when I press F12, I get a console at the bottom. You may get it on the right side if you're in Chrome. Let me run it in Chrome to confirm. When you run it in Chrome and you press F12, that brings up your console. Oh, and at the top, you might also have to have to switch to console view. Now when you click Battle, I got a random number. And another one, and another one, and another one. I'm getting random numbers. I'm getting fractions, numbers less than zero. This random number generator in most programming languages creates a random number between zero and one. And there are an infinite number of numbers between zero and one. Here I've got a bunch of them. 0319, 0236, 0919, on and on. So we've got random numbers. But I want, I want random numbers that are beyond 0, because I'm going to need to pick either 0, or 1, or 2. I need to pick a random number based on the number of characters I have. So math.random will automatically create a random number from 0 to 1. The way to fix that is, if you go back to the random number generator, going to add more to it. So before the end of the semicolon, one command, a space, we're going to multiply, which is the asterisk, which is shift 8. Let's say we put um, 15. This is going to be now a random number up to 15, basically. Is that inclusive? Yes. Um, 972, 13, 4, 37, 4, 2, 8, 7, 6, 1, 2, 3. So now it's going to be um, up to 15, but it's still giving me a fraction. So we want to round this. I don't need fractions anymore, I need whole numbers. 3 or 4 instead of 3.7. I mean 4 instead of 420. I mean 9 instead of 876. So let's wrap parentheses around that whole expression. Create a random number up to 15. But let's round it. So parentheses before those parentheses, math.round. So using the math object, let's round a number. The number is, let's make a random number. 
random number up to 15 and then round that. Is it rotating or is it actually rounding? It is rounding. It should actually round it based on the classic round up after five, round below, round down below four. So I got a 13, I got a 1, a 2, a 14, a 6, etc. Great, so I'm getting whole numbers now. I got 6 two times. Random numbers, whole numbers. Now the problem is, we're going we're gonna to choose a character 0, 1, 2. It's very hard to round down to 0. The number, you know, 1.1 1 .1 would round down to 1. 1.8 1 would round up to 2. If we get a 0 0.9, that rounds up to 1. If we get a 0 0.2, that rounds down to 0. But there's only, you know, 0, 0.0. .0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. There's only five possibilities of it rounding down to 0. 1.5, 1 1.6, 7, 8, 9. There's more possibilities. So instead of it deciding to round up or down, we want to make sure we include 0 more often than what this would choose. So we have a, ra a way to always round down. So if it's a 0 0.8, it'll round down to 0. If it's a 0 0.1, it'll round down to 0. If it's a 9.7, it rounds down to 9. If it's a 9.9999999, it rounds down to 9, because I want to include zeros more often. And what, what is down the floor? Someone was inventing this, they were having fun. Let's round it down, the floor is down. Call the floor. This will take the number, whatever it is, and always round it down. A 1.1 1 .1 becomes a 1. A 1.9 1 becomes a 1. A 1.9999992 1 becomes a 1. Floor. Because I want to be able to include 0. Let's see if I get a 0 randomly. There it is. There's a zero. It's a lot harder to get zero if you're doing the regular round. It's going to often round up. And there are some instances I don't want to include the lower number, so I want to always round up. A 1.8 becomes a 2. A 1.5 becomes a 2. A 1.1 becomes a 2. A 1.000001 becomes a 2. What's up? Exactly, seal. So rounding down to the floor or rounding up to the ceiling. Keep it on floor. I chose the number 15. How many uh, objects, items do we have in the array? Three. right now, but your assignment is going to have you create 8. And then later on you may have 20. So instead of going back and changing that hard-coded value, there is a way to check how many items do I have in the array and give me a number based on the number of items in the array. So instead of an actual hard-coded value, we'll have a variable value array heroes dot length give me the property length to the heroes which currently is three if I add one more character this will automatically change to be four random number up to four rounded down I add 20 more characters random number up to 20 rounded down create a random number always rounded down based on the number of items in the array.
So now when I run that, I'm getting either 0 or 1 or 2. So you're going to get a lot of repeats because there's very few numbers to choose from. I got 1, which is Invisible Woman, and 0, which is Spider-Man, and 2, Squirrel Girl, and then uh, Invisible Woman twice, and Spider-Man, and Squirrel Girl. So now I'm getting whole numbers that have been rounded down based on the number of characters I have. Well, like, the whole point of this random number is down here now. I'm going to change this back to Array of Heroes. If you changed it like me, I'm putting that back to Array of Heroes. I had said here, always display the third hero. So one, two. I've got a random number now. All of this calculation here is stored in that variable. What do you think you do? Random number hero. Write, write the number, the random number hero, the variable. We saw over here on our console output F12. We are generating a random number, a whole number, rather than based on the number of heroes. We've got a number. That then can be used here instead of writing two or one or whatever manually, which won't work at all. Um, we've got the random number that we're inventing here. And now when you save it and run it, and every time you click the button, it's going to have a different character. Maybe the same character more than once because we've only got three to choose from. There's not that much randomness here. If we had 30 characters, that's much more randomness. But three characters will kind of repeat itself a lot. Squirrel Girl, and you can still confirm in your console to a Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl. That again. Spider Man. Squirrel Girl again. Spider Man again. Spider Man again. It's Invisible Woman. So if your numbers are changing, but you're getting the same character? Same character? Confirm that. Array of heroes is set to that random number that we just created. The reason it would stay the same is because that's a that's a number. It should be the random number that we just created. So we need to do the exact same thing for the villains. We need to create a random number based on the number of villains we have. We're going to do the exact same thing here. New variable, random number villains, equal to math.floor, parentheses, math.random times array villains dot length. Now that we know, we're going to do these parentheses. Let's see, does that make sense? Math.floor. Whatever is in here will be rounded down. Well, that's another calculation. Be mindful of these parentheses. That's why I like to write the pair first so that you don't lose track. This is the part where you can be obsessive about how it would look nicer if we have those tabbed over like that.
on the same line where I'm displaying the hero space plus let's display the villain So here I've got a plus symbol. I'm going to display this, whatever that randomly happens to be, and I'm going to display that, whatever that randomly happens to be. In uh, computer languages, oftentimes a plus is not like 1 plus 1 equals 2. It works a little differently to help us create a sentence. Question? What has to be in the middle? forget about that my plurals and singulars but thank you for catching that array villains right there okay so this is in theory should display your hero and then your villain in the inner HTML property of that div on screen after every time that you click the button because this is all in the function do everything in this function after a click And then the computer diligently does what you tell it to do without any thought, because I would like spaces there. I would like it to, to look readable, but it did exactly what we told it, which is, you told me to write the character and then the other character. Nothing about spaces or the word verses or anything like that. So this is the example of why computers are dumb. They do exactly what you tell them when you program them and nothing more. In my mind, I would like it at least to be Spider-Man Space Venom. But it didn't. It just ran the words together, because we didn't tell it. Well, you wanted a space there? Why didn't you say so? So if I want simply at least a space, actually I wanted to say this versus that, we've got the plus symbol, space quotes versus space plus. Display this character, then or and the word versus, literally the word versus, and then the next. So great, now it'll do exactly what I'm thinking of, right? It didn't do exactly what I'm thinking, but it did exactly what I told it. This versus that. We need to put spaces before the word verses and a space after the word verses. And now finally it's doing what I'm thinking. So spaces in this case do matter. Everywhere else it doesn't. The spaces and tabs don't matter anywhere else. It matters and, and they are processed in the parentheses, in the quotes, because a space does take a space. It's not just invisible. It takes a space. It's ASCII character 32. It has a code in the system. And so now I've got one character and a space versus space and another character. Spider-Man versus that. Classic. Let's pause there. Are we getting some results to display on screen like this? Let's see the code right here.
Okay, so uh, we're getting some stuff to display on screen, uh, character versus character. Where the, the way this is going to work is that, just to keep it super simple, in the JavaScript class that I teach, I do this lesson there, but much more complex because we have all of these dimensions of the character's powers, like speed and strength and intelligence. Uh, all of those factors go into play about which character wins, and then we have it display like pictures of the characters and all that cool stuff. And here it's just going to be very direct, but a very good intro to JavaScript. Yes? Um, in JavaScript, it's not very I believe so. I, I believe we teach it every semester. So CIS 165 uh, it should be in the catalog for the next. Online? Uh, online at the moment. OK. Yeah. Yes? Is this possible to do without two different sets of characters? Uh, yeah, you could do this with one set of characters, but you'd have to keep track that the first five positions are the good guys, and the next five are the bad guys. So there could be a way for you to choose these random numbers based on you know, the first random number from 0 to 5, and then the second random number from 6 to 10. So it could be done all with one, but I, I would personally do it this way. The other one I think is a little too mentally tricky, but it could be done. So now we need to decide, okay, what are the powers? Uh, why does Invisible Woman beat Galactus today? Because of their various uh, powers. And here's some more random numbers. This time we're going to choose a number between 1 and 99. This character will get a strength of 99 at the moment. And this other one will have a strength of 20. So it wins. So it's more uh, random numbers here, random numbers assigned uh, to each character. So I'll back up to where we created the variables for the random number of the character, and we'll create a few more variables. This time var random uh, power hero. dot seal. This time I want it to go up. I don't want to include zero. I don't ha want to have any character with a power of zero. Even though one is not that much better. Random power villain. Villain, villains. Yeah, I called it heroes up there and I call it hero down here. Just be consistent. Math dot seal. Sealing. So we want to include zero up here. That's how we go to the floor. Up here, we don't want to include zero, so we go to the ceiling. But we're going to do the same sort of thing, math.random times something. I just wrote these two quickly to kind of show you I need a variable for the power of the hero and a variable for the power of the villain. They're both going to be rounded up. And then inside of the first parentheses, and again, I write my pairs here so that I don't, I don't forget. It's very easy to forget a pair got my pair, then I'm going to write inside of it math.random parentheses again. Math.random parentheses. So yes, you will have, for the moment, two parentheses like this. <coughs> of course, you should understand why this makes sense. That pair is for dot .seal, and that pair is for dot .random. Base times ninety nine. I don't need to be. I don't need it to be based on anything. But for fun, one way you can do it is based on the number of letters in the character's name times another random number. I love random numbers. Teaching with random numbers in my various classes because they're random numbers. They're fun. But here, ninety nine. This character could have a power between one and ninety nine. Round it up. And same thing down here, exactly the same thing. You can just copy and paste that. It will be some random number between 1 and 99. One for the hero, one for the villain. And, um, that's, there's going to be some logic, which will then cause them to battle. You can make a note. Create a random power for the 
the characters. Round it up. Up to 99. It can be anything you want. You know, lots and lots of power here. 999. Or you can make it over 9,000. Whatever you want. For us to see what those um, what those powers are before we we do the logic of it on our console here, console.log. We can say in quotes, hero power is colon space. That space is there so that the number that is generated does not bump up exactly next to the word. So we have a space there. Hero power is plus. Console.log. Remember, the console doesn't appear on screen. Uh, it appears in your console, F12. When I did this console previously, it just displayed the number without any context. And it was fine a little while ago because we were dealing with something at that moment. Now we're dealing with more things. So it's very useful in your console to give yourself a message. This random number that is appearing, what does it mean again? Oh, I made myself a note. This is the hero's power. battle. All of this is still happening from the from the same click from a while ago. All of these steps in this function. You see the power of this creating functions that are a variety of commands. So now that too doesn't make much sense because I never commented anything. But here I wrote hero power is and then it's displaying Number. So at the moment, Squirrel Girl would have had a 58, and Galactus would have had a 67. Click that again. Squirrel Girl was his Venom. She would have had 89. He would have had 94. Spider-Man versus Venom. He had a bad day. He had 5. He had 16. So this is the idea that we've got these characters that we're choosing at random. They've got a certain power at that moment. And then a little more JavaScript will do the logic about who won. Right now it's just raw numbers. It then has to make the logic of who won. These numbers are appearing in the console. I want them to appear on screen. I want the number to appear next to the character. So we've got show the, show the hero, and then versus, and show the villain. We can add more to this output, to this string. I want to show uh, the hero, and then in parentheses, the power, versus, and then the villain, and then in parentheses, the power. So. We'll add, um, let's add a space and a plus. This, this gets really weird when you first see it, but it should make sense as you do it more. It shows something, and then something, and then something, and then something. So that's why we've got two pluses right there. The plus is basically and. Show this, and that, and that, and that. Well, I want, in quotes, parentheses. the hero, and then I want to show parentheses. Oops, I need a space there before that parenthesis, or else the parenthesis will be right next to the character. You can put a space there if you want, but there's a space there. That space here. K 
character space parentheses. Inside of the inside of the parentheses, this is where we have the random power hero. This is that random number that's being generated up to ninety nine. There, this character has that random power. That makes sense. That's not quite right. Invisible woman, random power. I'm expecting a number. Squirrel girl, random power. I have the number, but it's showing the word. What's wrong? It's inside of the quotes. Quotes means display what's inside of quotes exactly as is. When we saw elsewhere, somewhere, we need this one, somewhere, where we wrote quotes, and it displayed literally the name of the object and not what was in the object. Isn't there a keyword or a inside the string that you can make it a good one? I mean, I know there is a the job so you can make it a so so if you know that it's a variable, it will be yeah. displayed as a variable always and not yeah. a string. Um, hmm, I don't think so. I don't think I've run across that. Um, I think that's a thing that Java has that is smarter than JavaScript. But I don't think I've seen a way for it to automatically know that should always be a variable and not a string. So we have to do something here a little tricky. Watch this a moment, and then we'll do it. I'm going to close the quote, and then a plus, and then a plus, and then a quote. <laughs> do this in a moment. But notice how I separated this. Display the opening parentheses, and then display that variable, and then close the parentheses. Back up. We have to do this very exact. This is what we have right now. I need to display that, not in quotes. End the quotes right here. Open quote, space parentheses, close quote. So let's add a quote right there. Space plus. Display the hero, and then display the opening parentheses, and then display the random number. Now that's invalid code, so we need to then say and then display the closing parentheses. Check your color coding here. The variable should not be in the color of the quotes. Check, check that all of these pluses are the, in the right place. Hero plus the opening quote plus its power plus the closing parentheses. So of course to make sure it's working when you run it, you should only see the number and not the quote. Let's pause here because this could easily go wrong, missing your proper. So in this case, Squirrel Girl's got a full power of 99 versus Venom's 21. Yes. I assume there was laws. Okay.
the same thing for the villain if this worked. We need to do the same sort of parentheses. Random our villain next to the villain's name. So to start off the way I would do it, after the villain there, before the semicolon, space plus parentheses or quotes parentheses space. We know we're, we're going to fix it up in a moment, but I would recommend <coughs> to write the to write the complete expression first and then fine tune it because we're going to do the same thing here. It's very easy to lose track of your pluses and all of that. So this is what I want plus quote space parentheses quote that space there is so that the parenthesis is right is not next to the name inside of it I want to display random power villain I'm gonna copy that that's getting long enough that I don't want to type it because I'm probably gonna mistype it so random power villains I just copied it from my line above okay, I need to do the same thing I need to end the quote right after the parenthesis plus the variable plus the other quote quote space plus space space plus space quote this is in quotes and the parenthesis plus the random number plus the parenthesis the quotes parenthesis space plus the villain so now it should show the hero and the villain's power on screen and Then we've got a battle, so 22 versus 80, 94 versus 18. She had the Infinity Gauntlet at that moment. So um, that that's, should match. It should not be different random numbers, um, 94, 18, because we're using the same random number. We created the random number when we run the function in order. Right, run the function battle, create these variables, create these variables, display them, display them. So it should be the same random number as long as this function is running. And those random numbers will then be used to determine who wins. We see who wins just by the numbers. But then we have to write some JavaScript to say, is this number more than that number? Yes, he or she won. Is this number less than or greater than? It's less than. He lost, etc. I think for the moment we'll end the lecture at this point. If it's working like this, great. Then when we get it working next, when we come back next time, we'll do the next like five lines, six lines or so of who won. So to keep you in suspense, we'll end at this point again for the fi for this final bit of code, which is part of the final project. I will not be giving you this code in the network folder but we will have a little lab time to make sure it's working before you leave. And then the final project will be based on this. It is on Blackboard now. You should look at it. We'll look at it also tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll probably spend like 30 minutes at the most, maybe 40 minutes, wrapping up this final code. Very short. We'll have lab time most of the day. Tomorrow, read, the, read what are the requirements. And then on Wednesday, all day lab time for you to come in. You have to come in in person and submit it. School policy is the last day of class you must be here or you fail the class. So make sure you come on Wednesday. Requirement. You're going to turn it in and um, you know check that everything's good in your grades and all of that and the last day is on Wednesday. So we'll have a little lab time until 11-ish uh, and that's it.